Good morning, everyone. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in Ordinary Times. And as the early music began, here I am, Lord. It is the call of St. Andrew and St. Peter. So let us now stand as we begin with our entrance song. At that time, 
Samuel was not familiar with the Lord. Because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet, the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are calm, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. against his own body. Do you not know that your body 
is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own. For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we hear this beautiful gospel today, I always get a kick out of the two disciples running after Jesus. Because I could see Jesus all of a sudden turning around and saying, Why are you following me? What do you want? And do you notice the question of Andrew? Where do you live? Now that might sound like a weird question, right? But before we receive the body and blood of Christ today, what do we say? Lord, I'm not worthy that you, you that I enter under your roof. Do you notice that connection there? There's a reason why we say that. When Andrew asks Jesus, where do you live? He's basically wanting to come into his home. And you remember, for a Jew, to come into your home meant you're not just wanting to know who this person is. You want to intimately get to know them. And that is why we say those words right before communion. Because we want to intimately know Jesus. But what's more exciting about this story is when Andrew does intimately get to know Jesus, what does he do? He immediately runs home to get his brother Simon. Simon, Simon, you've got to see this guy. He's excited. He's running back and forth when he got to know who Jesus is. Not just Jesus as the Messiah, 
But Jesus, as the Son of God living alive, entering our world, Andrew's excited. Are we excited about that anymore? You know, we come to church, but when we go out, are we excited about the Lord with people, family, friends, neighbors, co-workers? Are we really excited about being one with Jesus? That's the challenge in this gospel. What about our excitement in 2021? Or do we just take it for granted today? Oh yes, I'm a Catholic. Oh yes, I believe. Yeah? Well, if you believe and you're a Catholic, I hope you're excited about knowing the God of all creation, Jesus Christ. It's like a, a jeweler. There's a beautiful story about this one jeweler happened to sell all these different jewels over and over. <coughs> and some of the other jewelers were saying, like, why? How can this guy sell so many jewels and we can't? And they noticed, they knew a lot about the jewels they were selling. They could tell how hard it was, how many carats, how it was polished, where it came from. They could tell all these things. But they noticed that this one jeweler who was selling all jewels. Love the jewels. It was almost like he was in relationship with the jewel he was selling. Oh, this is, oh, you have to have all oh, this one. So instead of telling all the facts of the jewels, that jeweler who sold so many jewels sold the love of the jewels. That's what Andrew does. Andrew is not quoting doctrine, theology, scripture. He's not quoting sacramental belief. He's not quoting the creed. He's excited about Jesus the Christ and therefore runs home and tells his brother, I've seen him, I've seen him, I've seen him. It's kind of like one of my experiences in the first few years as a priest. I went up to give a blessing to a little four-year-old. And I bless the four-year-old, and right after that, the four-year-old screams to mommy, God just touched me. And I'm there like, whoa. But he was excited because God, well, priest, just touched him. Do we have that same excitement? So many times I see us at church on Sunday, I see us at church on the weekdays, and I see us walk out solemnly, which I'm not saying is wrong, but I don't see us going into the world excited about having a relationship with that Jesus Christ after we have just received his body and blood. I don't see that type of excitement that often. You know, as we celebrate, in our country this Monday, Martin Luther King. He had a great love of Jesus Christ. And I think you see that if you read his speeches or hear any of the speeches. Why was he able to move people? Why? Because he wasn't just professing theology about Jesus Christ. He was loving Jesus Christ and all the people in our community. When you listen to his speeches, how excited he is. I mean, they're, they're not just, let me read from a piece of paper. When he says, I have a dream, if you notice it echoes when he says it. It's not like, I have a dream. His love of Christ changed people's hearts and minds, didn't it? We may not like everything he said, but they didn't like Jesus in everything he said either, did they? Or the prophets. How many of the prophets who kept on crying out the ways of God were martyred? How many early Catholics were martyred because they enjoy 
and excitement and love proclaim Christ Jesus. The challenge of this gospel is when we are fed with the body and blood of Christ, which is why we say we are not worthy to enter under your roof, but we do, don't we? If we are excited about we, what we have just received, can we use that excitement to make life a gift that we're not fighting the issue of abortion anymore, that we're not fighting the issue of social injustices, because life is such a great thing that God gave us, and we love that God, and we love the life he gave us, and we celebrate it like Andrew, running about and calling other people to it. That's the excitement of Andrew. That's the excitement of Samuel today. When Eli says, just listen. Because remember what Samuel will do. He will change Israel. He is the prophet who called the first king of Israel into existence through the excitement of God and his people. Andrew called his brother, who would become our first pope. It was in his excitement, in his joy, that he changed the world. It is going to be in our excitement to be intimately related to Jesus Christ that we also can change the world in so many ways. Let us stand now. So let us now confess our faith in that God that we deeply love, that we deeply celebrate, as we say, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God, God from true God. God. Be God, God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life in the world to come. Amen. And so with that joy of St. Andrew, with that intimate love of our God, let us now turn in prayer that we, we may destroy all sin that destroys the value of life and that takes away justice. The response to our intercessions is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that like Andrew, who stayed with the Lord and then invited his brother as well, we who have found our home in the Lord may go forth and bear witness to others. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our leaders, who have responded to the call to serve others in public office, that they may work humbly and tirelessly to serve the common good, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all our citizens may work to hasten the day when the country truly lives the ideas for which Martin Luther King Jr. fought and gave his life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That during this week of prayer for Christian unity, 
which begins tomorrow, all Christians may be inspired to find solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling to hear the Lord's voice in our lives or understand the nature of their calm, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for the special intention of this Mass, for all parishioners, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the prayers inscribed in our book of special intentions, for all of those who have asked us to pray for them, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. But let us especially remember this week as we remember 48 years of Roe versus Wayne, that all life, from the womb to the tomb, may always be held forward as you have created with dignity, honor, and respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Night of the 
lifestyle. He took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. 
and graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And so may the peace of the Lord be with all of you and with your first spirit. Let us now share some sign of God's peace. Excitement and 
joy of being one with Christ and one with each other as we celebrate Christian Unity Week. And so the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God be with all of us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.